gonna <laughs> this is gonna be a review of the Devil Wears Prada. Th this might be a weekly mail reviews first here that we're talking about right now. We're gonna do Devil Wears Prada live albums. No, uh, false. Alice in Chains and To Be Unplugged. Oh, whatever. Second. It's a second. It's a second one. Uh, but I'm just gonna start talking. All right, I, I've done a few reviews on the Devil Wears Prada now. If you're watching this video, you might you most likely know who the Devil Wears Prada is, and um, or you've really listened to them or know a, a decent deal about them. So I'm not gonna talk about them at all. I'm suspecting you. Uh, yeah, I know this guy, I know that guy. But um, what what is to talk about? The whole the whole deal is you get this uh, dead and alive uh, little. CD pack thing comes with a DVD of a live performance. It comes with a bonus feature thing that just shows them talking about what they did in like the Dead Throne, how they felt about the album, like how they feel about themselves as a band now. They made some very good points. Um, I definitely agree with everything that they've said. I I really you know feel them on it, but um. Uh, this is a live album filmed in the Palladium, Palladium, in Massachusetts, uh, United States of America. Um, what, what they play? Sixteen songs. They play quite a quite a bit. I think a majority is from Dead Throne. Then they play a few songs from With Roots Above. They play only one song from Plagues. And they play one song from uh, blah, 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 Dear Love. I, I, they play, uh, what is it? Uh, dogs. Uh, fuck, I'm having. My brain is weird right now. Dogs grow beers all over. Yeah. Um, they play uh, Hey John, and those are like the two songs from those albums. Uh, but then they played. They played quite a bit. They played some good songs for, off of uh, With Roots Above. And definitely off of Dead Throne, they played quite a few good songs, but I was hoping they would play R.I.T., uh, Rest in Torment, but they didn't play that one. They played, oh yeah, they also played two songs off of a Zombie EP. That's what I was forgetting. But um, overall, it was, it was a pretty great set. Um, like I said, there's, I, I can see why they didn't play much off of Plague, since that, I mean, that was their second album. Uh, they played some good songs off of um, With Roots Above, and they played Assistant to the Regional Manager, they played Des Moines, uh, they played Danger Wildman, and Sassafras. Man, those are some good songs. I'm, I'm happy with what they played. They played uh, Escape and Outnumbered off of the Zombie EP, which is pretty good, but um, I'm just telling you what you probably already know. You could just go to the store and look on the back and see what they uh, played here, but the live performance itself was incredible. Um, they, first of all, they come out and they have a lot of energy compared to when I saw them. I saw, I've seen them once at Mayhem, and I just feel like something was missing there. But uh, they played uh, at the uh, what's it again? Pal Palladium in Massachusetts, and they just had so much energy. Like they come out and they sounded terrific. Uh, Mike. His, he sounded great, I think. First time I listened to it, I'm like, yeah, alright, he sounds kind of off at some parts, and like he's just taking breaths, and he's just saying things instead of screaming them, but that, that, that's, uh, that's expected with pretty much any live band, I guess. But, um, there's some out there that don't do that, but it's kind of expected when he's like running around a lot on stage where he has to take his breath, but, uh, overall, I think it was just an incredible performance, a whole lot of energy. Um, the only complaint, I guess, would be that it's kind of expected that Jeremy didn't sound like what he does on the albums because, you know, in the studio he's standing there singing and he's not like running around on stage, so you know, he's just standing there, he sings, and they, there's usually two or more vocal tracks, you can tell. Um, there's usually two or more vocal tracks, especially like, uh, I don't know, Danger Wild Man, when he sings, there's at least two vocal tracks there. Um, Dead Throne, uh, their songs, um, 
usually two or more vocal tracks, like in Born to Lose. That one, it just didn't sound, it, it just sounded so empty when he's singing. That song, I don't know why, that one stood out more than the other ones. Just when you went up there and you started singing, I'm like, that sounds so empty. But they used like two or three vocal tracks for him on that part. But uh, what can you do? It's still live. It was still an incredible performance. For anyone that likes that band, what an incredible performance. The crowd was going fucking insane. It was cool to watch. I just wish I could have been there. For someone that doesn't like this band, it's not going to change their opinion much, I guess. But um, it was still really a good performance. And I, I am a cheap ass, and I don't like to spend like $20 on an album, but this is definitely worth the purchase for me. I don't even like spending $17 on an album. I still feel that's overpriced. Like 17 bucks for like 10 songs? I mean, that's, that's more than a dollar a song. That's, I don't like those. That, that ratio, but um, it, it's still one heck of a live album. If you like this band, you'll love it. I don't know what else to say. Oh yeah, it's one thing I was going to say in the Dead Throne uh, review that I did of the album. I was going to say this, but then it slipped my mind, and I noticed it again on the live album. You can't really notice on Dead Throne, but uh, Christopher Ruby does screams as well. He hasn't done them since what was it, Dear Love, I think. He hasn't done Screams on an album since Dear Love. And he does a uh, couple of Screams live. They don't sound exactly like Mike. Like, you can kind of point out when it's Chris and when it's... Well, you can definitely tell when it's Mike. But you can kind of point out the parts where that's Chris. But it still sounds really good. I like it. It kind of adds something to it. I mean, they have, like, the main guy that screams. They have Mike. Then they have Chris, who can also scream. Then they have Jeremy that sings. And this band is versatile. But I guess I'll give this a rating, performance-wise, and you know the whole camera angles and whatnot, and the songs they played. I would have to give this just because I love this band like a 9.8 out of 10. For a live album, it it was incredible. It really it really makes you think like damn. And once you listen to this, it's kind of hard to go back to the studio sometimes because you listen to it, it sounds live, like you feel like you're there and you're really into it. Then you go back to the studio and you don't hear the crowd and, you know, it's just not that live sound. You're kind of like, oh, this is still good, but, I mean, you just, it hooks you with that live sound. You, you love it. You feel like you're there and it just feels great. But, yeah, 9.8 out of 10, and you can't tell me otherwise. And that's that. Because Stone Cold said so.